2022 has been a tough year for crypto investors. Just eight months ago, the total value of the cryptocurrency market was above $3 trillion. Now, however, the market is battling to retain a total value above $1 trillion. It goes without saying that a 67% drop in market value is bad news for investors. And if you invest in crypto, you know this better than anyone. But how did we even get here? Why is crypto crashing? The first reason is the US Federal Reserve. Let's back it up a bit. So when the pandemic broke out in 2020, there was quite a significant yet brief crash in the global markets, both the stock market and the crypto market. That was because at the time, there was significant uncertainty around the impact of the coronavirus, not only on the markets, but on the global economy itself. The leading stock market measures took such a beating that they entered a bear market for the first time in over a decade. But the crypto crash was even worse. Bitcoin, for example, fell below $5,000 and shed nearly 40% of its value in 24 hours. It's crazy to even think that just over two years ago, Bitcoin was priced as low as $5,000 compared to its current price at over $20,000 and its all-time high of over $64,000. But that was very much the case. And at the time, these uncertainties around COVID ravaged the crypto market back when its total value was only around $170 billion. Anyway, in order to prevent the economy from collapsing amidst the pandemic, global central banks rolled out some of the most supportive monetary policy changes in history. These policy changes came in the form of interest rates and quantitative easing, both of which had a very significant impact on the crypto market, which we'll talk about. Starting with interest rates, the Federal Reserve made the decision to keep the federal funds effective rate at virtually zero. This was done to encourage economic activity by making it very cheap to borrow money. Remember, the last thing central banks wanted was for the economy to collapse, so they needed to encourage spending. But they took it one step further. Global central banks started buying trillions of dollars and euros worth of government bonds and mortgage-backed securities in a technique known as quantitative easing. This is generally what people are referring to when they say that central banks have the ability to print unlimited money. The goal here was to inject liquidity into the economy and to support the financial markets. One of the intended effects of quantitative easing is that the returns offered to investors by fixed income investments like government bonds is reduced. As you can see, the returns offered by US government bonds plummeted once quantitative easing started. So what does any of this have to do with the crypto market? Typically, when investors can no longer obtain decent returns from safer investments like bonds, riskier asset classes like stocks and cryptocurrencies appreciate in value. This has been clearly seen over the past two years as the S&P 500 has doubled in value from $20 trillion to $40 trillion. But from a pure investment return perspective, the stock market can't hold a candle to the crypto market, with the crypto market increasing in value 20 times over between March 2020 and November 2021. If you bought the more established coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum, you were doing well. But likewise, smaller altcoins like Doge or Shiba Inu also had the potential to provide you with massive unprecedented returns in very short periods of time. However, today's crypto market is much different to the crypto market of 2020 and 2021. And as we already alluded to, that's largely because of global central banks. You see, a side effect of favorable monetary policies like low interest rates and quantitative easing is very high demand. And when you have things like the pandemic and a war going on, it can be very hard to source the necessary supply to meet that demand. This this has led to inflation, the likes of which we haven't seen for decades. The cost of living is quickly spiraling out of control. And in order to restore some semblance of normality, central banks are now taking action. That action has come in the form of an end to quantitative easing and the beginning of quantitative tightening, which is essentially the opposite. Selling billions, if not trillions of government bonds and mortgage-backed securities in order to increase the yields on these investments. In addition, to this, interest rates are being increased on a continuous basis for the remainder of 2022 and into 2023. All of this is being done in an attempt to lower consumer demand, reduce spending and to control inflation. But just like how investors rotate into riskier assets like cryptocurrencies when 
interest rates and yields are falling, they rotate out of these investments fairly aggressively when rates and yields are rising. That's exactly how the crypto market is being affected by the monetary policies imposed by global central banks. As government bond deals and mortgage rates hit their highest levels in over a decade, the crypto market experienced and continues to experience one of its biggest sell-offs in history. But it's not just monetary policy which is causing price declines in crypto. We also have to consider the recent issues within the wider cryptocurrency ecosystem. Specifically, I'm referring to the crash of Terra Luna. Luna is the native token of the Terra blockchain, which was created by Joe Kwan and his company Terraform Labs. Separately, Terra USD or UST is a stable coin which aims to be pegged to the US dollar. Stable coins are designed to maintain a stable value relative to another currency, meaning in theory, at any time you should be able to exchange 1000 UST tokens for $1,000. UST is what's known as an algorithmic stablecoin and it maintained its peg to the US dollar by using a complex balancing mechanism with Luna token, which of course had the ability to fluctuate in value, just like any other token. However, things took a turn for the worst in May this year when UST lost its peg to the US dollar amidst the heightened volatility that the wider crypto market was experiencing. Both UST and Luna collapsed by 100% in what was one of the most shocking and devastating blows to the crypto ecosystem. The collapse cost investors $40 billion collectively and worse yet, forever damaged the trust and faith that many had not only in algorithmic stable coins but also in cryptocurrencies as a whole. Now Do Kwan and Terraform Labs are facing lawsuits from investors, investigations from the SEC and South Korean police and even warnings from Anonymous. And even though you personally may not have been invested in UST or Luna, this collapse has certainly put downward pressure on cryptocurrency valuations. But the Terra Luna collapse is just one of the recent setbacks in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Celsius, who are a company specializing in cryptocurrency loans, recently made the decision to halt withdrawals from the platform, essentially freezing users' funds. They did this in response to, quote, extreme market conditions, which required them to, quote, act in the interest of their community in order to stabilize liquidity and operations while preserving and protecting assets. $12 billion worth of user assets were locked away as a result of the decision. And now Celsius is asking for even more time as they try to fix issues. The point is that there's still lots of uncertainties around cryptocurrency as an investable asset class, which is to be expected considering it's still in its infancy. However, so long as setbacks like Terra Luna and Celsius continue to persist, I believe the wider crypto ecosystem will continue to suffer and prices will come under pressure like we're seeing now. The other factor to consider here is the regulatory uncertainty surrounding cryptocurrencies. In the stablecoin report published by the president's working group on financial markets, they found multiple risk factors associated with stablecoins, including market integrity, investor protection, fraud, market manipulation, insider trading, lack of price transparency, money laundering, terrorist financing, and prudential concerns. That was in November last year, and with the Terra Luna collapse in mind, it seems as though the concerns were more than justified. Recently, the president of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, went on record saying that cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance have the potential to pose a real threat to the financial stability of our economies. Bear in mind, this is coming from the same regulators who introduced macro prudential regulations after the Great Recession to ensure that reckless mortgage practices never surfaced again. Financial stability is everything to global central banks and they'll do whatever it takes to protect it. We know that European regulators are planning on introducing MICA 2 or the second version of the markets in crypto assets regulation in 2024. Lagarde has said that MICA 2 will cover decentralized finance and it will also regulate crypto staking and lending activities, essentially nodding towards the recent trouble with Celsius. From a US perspective, you might remember that Joe Biden issued an executive order to the Justice Department, the Treasury and others to study the implications of creating a central bank digital currency or CBDC. Unlike other cryptocurrencies, a CBDC would be a digital form of money, which is issued and backed by the US Federal Reserve. From the perspective of regulators, if stable coins are going to be the future of payments, then having a CBDC is a preferable option because it's under their control. Of course, there are pros and cons to crypto regulation, with one of 
of the more prevalent downsides being the potential for regulation to disrupt how existing crypto businesses operate. But what's important to remember, and this was explicitly called out by Janet Yellen in response to Biden's executive order, is that the goal is not to introduce regulations which will topple crypto, but rather it's about striking the balance between innovation and consumer protection. Everyone recognizes the potential for good associated with blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. In my opinion, collaboration between regulators and crypto stakeholders is necessary, not only for consumer protection, but also for the longevity of the crypto ecosystem itself. But in the short term, it is reasonable to expect some price pressure coming from uncertainties around regulation. I've been thinking a lot about how I would explain the crypto crash to someone who either A, isn't involved in the investing world at all, or B, has some money in crypto, but really doesn't have any idea what they're doing. And ultimately, it all comes down to this. Global central banks are introducing policies which have historically resulted in money rotating out of riskier assets like stocks and crypto and into safer assets like bonds. So that fact alone is resulting in price declines. But then you also have factors like ecosystem concerns after the Terra Luna and Celsius scandals, as well as rampant uncertainty with respect to future regulation. That's having the effect of compounding the price declines beyond what would be expected if it was just monetary policy that investors had to worry about. At the end of the day, crypto is and always will be a speculative and non-productive asset. Because it's not possible to place a fair valuation on crypto, nor is it possible to assess the reasonableness of the market's valuation, crypto will always be susceptible to extreme price swings. And it will always be the first asset class to feel the effects of stricter monetary policies. What I want to hear from you, what are your thoughts on the crypto crash? Are you concerned about the Terra Luna and Celsius scandals? And has it made you worried for the future? Let me know in the comments. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.